Although we made these changes from the print preview screen, we can make the same changes from the page layout tab as well. Click that tab now. We can set the margins, change orientation, and change page size and print area. All right, let's prepare to print. Click the Microsoft Office button again, and click Print from the pull-down menu. This dialog box gives us access to everything needed in printing a spreadsheet. The top of this box shows which printer is currently being used, what port it is connected to, and if it is active. Click the arrow to the right of the name box. If you have more than one printer available to you, or if you have a fax program as a print option, those drivers will be listed here. Make sure the print driver for the printer currently connected to your system is selected. Press the Escape key to close the menu. The Print Range option allows us to print specific sheets within a workbook. For example, if our workbook held 25 worksheets of information, we could tell Excel to print sheets 11 through 18, or another array of pages without printing out the entire spreadsheet. Although our workbook has several worksheets, we don't have to tell Excel to print only one or be stuck with a bunch of blank pieces of paper. Excel can see the other sheets are empty, so it won't send them to the printer. Make sure the All option is selected. The Print What area is asking us what we want to print, a selected range of cells, the active sheet, or the entire workbook. We want to use the default to print the active sheet. This is the worksheet we currently have on screen, so make sure that option is selected. Excel asks how many copies of our workbook we want printed. The increment arrows allow us to indicate how many copies we want. Below the Number of Copies box is the Collate Copies option. This is helpful when printing more than one copy of the spreadsheet. If the copies are grouped or not collated, all the page 1's will be together, then all page 2's, and so on. Collating puts the pages of each copy in order. Typically, with a multi-page document, you'll want to collate your copies. The graphic beside the Collate button shows us how the worksheets will be collated or organized when the spreadsheet is finally printed. Since we are printing only one copy of the spreadsheet, it won't matter if this option is toggled on. Suzanne, I think we're ready to print our spreadsheet, so click OK. Save the file once more. It's time to close our file and exit the Excel program. Suzanne, click the Microsoft Office button and select the Close option at the bottom of the menu. If we had made changes to the file, but had not saved it before closing it, Excel will ask us if we want to save it. Click Yes. The file of the Turning Pages bookstore closes, but the Excel application window remains open and ready for us to create a new file or reopen a previously created one. To close the Excel program, we can close Excel by clicking the X on the title bar. But let's use another method to close the application. Click the Microsoft Office button and select Exit Excel from the bottom right side of the box. The Excel application closes. If we had not closed the workbook and changes had been made to it, Excel would give us the opportunity to save the file again. Although the Excel application may remain open with no data files present, the reverse is not true. No data file may be open without Excel being present. Viewers, click the Start button on the Windows taskbar so we can open Excel again. Move the mouse pointer to the All Programs menu item. Locate and click the Microsoft Excel program title. It may be listed on its own or under the Microsoft Office heading. When Excel is launched, we are provided with a new empty workbook. Let's reopen the existing file we were working on to confirm our changes were actually saved. This time, we'll use our list of recently used files to open it. Click the Microsoft Office button. The box on the right side displays a list of our recent documents. Look for the Turning Pages bookstore in this list and click it. The menu hides and the file opens. The empty worksheet with the default name Book 1 that appeared when we launched Excel is replaced by the file we just opened. With that, we have come to the end of this lesson. In Lesson 2, we'll expand on the skills we learned here, as well as create and manipulate charts. We'll continue with other formatting techniques, create more functions and formulas, 
build charts, and increase our repertoire of print capabilities. Thank you for being such good students. And remember, there is always more you can learn from me, the Video Professor. <laughs>